Welcome to Creative Writing Energy, conversations about the writer's life, craft and alternative practices with Kim Peterson and Catherine Evans. Hello, Catherine Evans. How are you? I'm good, Kim Peterson. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am not too bad. Thank you. Warming That's up, good. isn't it? It is. Summer's coming with a vengeance. About the weather. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Gone down to the beach lately? I went yesterday. Had a little swim in the um, Jerangong Rock Pool. You know, at Boat oh, Harbour. I saw yeah. your, um, quickly. Oh, I a little, little octopus. Saw your little octopus. Yeah. You and your I was octopus. pretty excited to see that. <laughs> was that a blue ring? No, just a normal octopus. Oh, how cute. I know. He was kind of big. In, oh, was it? Um, yeah. Because the suckers uh, is what I noticed. Those white suckers on their tentacles. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that what they call Suckers? Mm, that's what I call them. <laughs> <All righty. laughs> Speaking of suckers, yes. um, our creativity prompt today is a really cool one. I love it. And it is, are your skeletons ready to dance? Go check your closet. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. What do you think about that? Other than wild, you got some skeletons there hiding? I'm sure I do. <laughs> Are they ready to dance? Mm, maybe. <laughs> do they dance in your work? Um, probably, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. You know, I think anyone that says that they have no skeletons in their closet are either lying through their teeth or they're delusional. <laughs> Yeah. Stuff delusional, <laughs> deluding themselves. We all have some skeletons, right? And I think yeah. through story, it's um, it's it's where we can sort of flirt with that darkness, bring it out, and and inject it into our words and explore explore that part of ourselves. It kind of gives us a safe medium to do so, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, <laughs> and lets your skeletons out without actually letting them letting out. Them out. <laughs> Yes, dance with your skeletons. Safe release. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, real but not. Hmm. Like, That's it. Yeah. Alrighty, hmm. so what are we talking about? Oh, first we need to do our cards. Normal cards. Mm. Yeah. Normal cards. <laughs> our normal cards, yeah. Our normal thing, yeah. So. Are you going first? Sorry. Soul journey? Uh, yeah. I'm using the Soul Journey as per right. usual, and I've shuffled, and I'm going to pull out the card. Hmm. Perseverance. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. That's laughs> I know what I can do. What I know I can do whatever I set my mind to. Yes. Mm. Just takes hard work. <laughs> hard work, baby. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Perseverance. Perseverance. Right. Yeah. Trust your vibes. Mm -hmm. Love your true kits. Trust your vibes. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. You're not going to complain about this one today. I'm not. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> not after last week. <laughs> So, and Tyler kind of roused on me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can argue with the universe and tell them to pick again. <laughs> no, you can. Oh, you can. Okay. You can. You can. Trust me. <laughs> Trust <laughs> the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, the book says, just as you feed your body, you must also feed your spirit. It makes you stronger, energized and more powerful. Most people are unaware of what feeds their spirit, but even if they know, they neglect to follow through. Don't be guilty of this. What feeds mm. your spirit? Love. Oh, mine's being out in nature. Yeah, yeah, but that's love, right? Yeah, connected. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Connected. It's like I, I don't mean just romantic love. I just mean love, love for everything. Yeah. You know? 
and um, definitely nature <laughs> that does feed mm. my spirit, you know. Um, and and what you just read out was so true because a lot of people, you know, they they do neglect or they know and they just they won't go there. Fear, fear yeah. holds a lot of people back, don't you think? Yeah. Plus, trying to fit into society, you know, it races you along, you know, and you get into that work, go home, cook, feed kids, go to bed, work, go home, feed kids. You know, and you lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you lose your spirit. You know, you've got to find. Well, I think time. that's when you start to live um, a little bit inauthentically. And after a while, yeah. that just um, accumulates and. and and um, it does, yeah. It, it's like it shrivels you from the inside out, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, a lot of people kind of arrive to a place in their lives where they're like, they've got to make that that choice. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not everyone. Uh, a lot of people like to kind of continue to, to, to live the way they live, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so skeletons, spirit, and perseverance. <laughs> mm. All the spooky sides. Nice. So, yeah, we're talking about um, TV shows today. <laughs> yeah. Story it, and TV story shows. Story and TV shows. Yeah. I, I, I just had this idea, you know, it was last week. and I was It was dirty out. dancing, wasn't it? Kept popping up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That was a that's gone now. Dirty dancing is gone. Oh, but huge. I would say my um my what do you call it? iPad. Whenever I plug in my earphones now, and I and I don't even have to touch it, it would just randomly select a song and play it. And I could even be like doing something else on the screen and it would just start playing a song. And one 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 afternoon I sat here and I was writing, I was working and I had it like just here on my bed, <laughs> my office bed. <laughs> and mm. and I was writing down like every 10 minutes or so, it would just randomly select another song and I'd just stop it. But then again, it would start again. And I started writing down the playlist it was giving me. And it was actually quite remarkable, but <laughs> yeah, oh. it's, it's, you know, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Your iPad's possessed by a musical spirit. Yeah, some skeletons in its closet. Mm. <laughs> They're dancing. <laughs> They're dancing all right. <laughs> dancing with me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, Kath, TV shows. Let's stop yeah. talking about um, all the old school ones because they're fun. What ones did you like as a child? Have they date us? Who? I said they date us, don't they? they Show don't us how old we, we are. <laughs> you know, I was writing a list and mm -hmm. I noticed that all of mine are um, about family, supernatural and animals, <laughs> which yep. seem kind of, kind of like, well, I don't really write supernatural because I'm a bit scared of that, but the rest is what I write. But I, I will write supernatural. <laughs> Oh my God, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. I love Mr. Ed. Hello, Ed. <laughs> that is old school. Is that Wilbert? Wilbur. 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 Yeah. And I, I wanted I used to watch that. I always wanted a horse. So when I got a horse, I was so sure she was going to talk to me. But anyway. I know. Not no, out loud, like. Mr. Talking Ed. horse might just drive you crazy after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> My cats, you know, they don't talk, but they still drive me crazy. That's At true. Times. At least yeah, you can put them outside or lock them away. I actually, I mean, I'm always quite um, grateful that my cats are not vocal cats. You know how cats, some cats just like meow mm. and yeah, that would drive me nuts. My cats don't do that. <laughs> They're quiet. They're introverts. Like quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other animal shows. Did you watch Kimber the White Lion? That cartoon. I did not. Oh, and Daktari. It was um. That. 
It's almost like an Atari it was, game. It was some um, American show about vets who went to Africa and they had um, Clarence the cross-eyed lion that was like their pet. Okay. Because he was cross-eyed, he couldn't live out. Beauty, a monkey who um, was like the best friend of the lion and used to tease it. Cool. It was, um, yeah, it was wild. I loved it though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you got like Bewitched and I Dream of Jenny. I loved those. And I, oh, yeah. I loved those for the magic. Yes. Definitely. You know, I just, um, anything to do with, yeah, paranormal or, or that would, um, you know, grab, grab my imagination. I loved, like I loved the thought of Jeannie in her bottle, you know, yes. with that beautiful, um, chair all around it, you know, like yeah. it was magic. Wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it was. It was lovely. Yeah. Plus, she was like a really strong woman, wasn't Jeannie? Like, she didn't take any shit from Master. Uh, yeah. hmm, she was a bit submissive. <laughs> but that she was a genie. That was supposed to be a bit like what yeah. she was supposed to be. And, you know, but she played him off like a bit. getting around in that little outfit. Oh, yeah. Girl, like eye candy and blonde hair and ditzy. But she was... Yeah, happy. but... It was the 60s or the 70s, wasn't it? Women yeah. didn't have a lot of um, <laughs> place in the world. But I, I thought she um, was played off master with Roger, didn't she? Like, there was a bit of a thing there. Yeah. Is that my warped mind? Well, they ended up getting married or something, you know. Who? Jeannie and Roger. Did they? they did in the again. show or for real? No, in the show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and that and bewitch bewitch was great you know she um oh, yeah, yeah. i loved um her mother, her mother was and great. dora yeah <laughs> and, and uh clara the one who used to come down the chimney and be all sooty and stuff yep. i loved her yeah <laughs> yeah so you know i think all those shows um the childhood ones you know you can kind of look back and you you can see the pattern of how that's influenced in your your life you know what i mean like when you look back to your past you can definitely tell and um you can kind of see see answers through that because i love writing supernatural things and and i still love you know those kind of shows the fantasy things not all of you know not all the time it's not all i watch but you know i love like game of thrones and you know are you a supernatural fan the winchester um, boys you know i i don't even think i've watched supernatural <laughs> what oh yeah no. oh i did watch God. um grim i watched grim oh yeah hmm watch Grimm. not not all of the seasons and I tend to, unless it's a super great show, I tend to kind of bore, might sort of fade out of a series after a few seasons. If it's kind of, if it kind of, a lot of times it can be repetitive, you know? Yeah. And like you were saying before, as storytellers, you kind of, you know what's coming and, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I did watch, um, What's that vampire series that I was watching a while ago? Oh my god! Not Buffy one. No, no, or the Netflix. Netflix, the Netflix one. Oh. Um, the originals. I watched all of that. Yeah, okay. yeah. A couple of seasons were a bit, yeah, but you know, it was good. I'm a supernatural addict. There's not many shows that I watch like every series but supernatural i think they're up to 13 or 14 series Is this still going? I, uh, yeah Seriously? watch them all and because it they mix it up you know like they'll have these wacky offbeat shows every now and again that you know they'll have a serious storyline and then they do some wacky mad crazy thing that's just hilarious and it kind of mixes up the story so you're not stuck in the same world all the time. They, you know, they time travel and they do all sorts of weird stuff. 
Mm -hmm. Love that. And yeah, my husband just watches it and goes, this is ridiculous and yeah. leaves. He won't watch it, but he watches stuff that I can't do. I just go, oh, this is rubbish. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so subjective, isn't like, it? It's very, I think some of the movies that my husband chooses to watch, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Actually, he, um, he's he been watching one called the Santa Clarita Diet with, um, I think, Drew Barrymore is in there and it's a, it's kind of like a, a, a zombie. Um, oh. She turns into a zombie or something. It might be a, an apocalypse. Anyway, he loved it and um, I've got to watch that. So oh, okay. I'm going to check that one out. He's watched all of it. And, um you know, there are so many benefits that the modern author can um, derive from watching TV shows because some of the best storytelling now, today, can be found on those series. Some yeah. great storytelling. Um, and I think it's important for writers to have their finger on the pulse. And that yeah. if you're kind of not watching, I mean, yeah, if you're not watching one of the you know, some series and stuff, you, you're risking kind of um, spacing that gap between, you know, what's going on in modern storytelling to, um, to what you might be writing, you know, and TVs are like a major source of storytelling. Yeah. Mm. And trend, isn't it? Trend. Trend. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's kind of like, on fire right now isn't it and it's cheap you know you don't have to go to the movies and spend a fortune um you can watch it anywhere like on your um ipad or yeah your phone you grab a netflix account and you're sorted mm. <laughs> right yeah it gives you so much um of those crafty things too like hooks mm -hmm. at the end of the chapters like the end of your episode it's what I, keeps yeah. people looking back at the telly not you know going on to the next episode on your netflix rather than waiting for next week on the telly or whatever isn't it yeah yeah i mean it's in, it's um a great medium to immerse ourselves in in that in storytelling in the incredible writing that's going on there and and also you know it, i i think i find you know these tv series the story structure is very um what's the word um it, it, we can learn a lot from story structure because it's just it's it doesn't drag out it's it's there and then the focus you can focus sort of focus on the dialogue and the interaction between the characters and I find um, I kind of gain a lot of insight into that and helping me to build my own relationships and and dy dynamics between my own characters mm -hmm. um, and the chemistry you know, yeah. I, I love that about that. And um, yeah, I'll kind of jot things down sometimes as I'm watching shows. Yeah. yeah. I did that um, early on. Um, someone critiqued my work and told me I didn't put enough um, visceral reactions, you know, like body reactions and expressions into my writing. Mm -hmm. So I sat um, with a notepad and pen and watched um, mostly supernatural because those boys are pretty easy to watch um and yeah. try to yeah very easy <laughs> but tried to pick up facial expressions and body um movements that went with different reactions yeah yeah okay um and that's then, interesting I've just, oh there's a yeah yeah there's also that movie meet joe black i don't know if you've seen it, but yeah. um, Brad Pitt's in it and he plays Death. Mm -hmm. And when he's um, when he's human, he's really um, expressive and his face and body is really, um, you know, like normal, natural. But when he plays Death, who takes over the body of the person, he, he blanks out. And, and um, like, I think that shows how much the humanity of body reactions and expressions mm -hmm. yeah there's some mm. really um tender moments in that show it's gorgeous isn't it isn't that beautiful one of my favorite movies 
Yeah, to have my one of my girlfriends, Sharon, that's all, being one of her all time favourites. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first time I actually realised Brad Pitt pay, could act and wasn't just a pretty boy. You know, like before that, I always just thought he was just a pretty boy. But in that, I was like, holy crap, this guy can act. Yeah. Yeah, he's mm. pretty good, actually. He's kind of proved himself oh. past, past the, um, you know, outer yeah. exterior. Yeah. Which, yeah, it was it's funny how people tend to think, you know, a beautiful person like that, um, the base it on their looks rather than their talent or what's, what's, yeah. They, yeah. But early on, I think he had roles that didn't really stretch him. Mm -hmm. And that was because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Um, but um, you're talking about expressions and, and, you know, expressing the emotions and through mm -hmm. the story. I do have this resource that I use um, when I write at times, and it's the Emotion Thesaurus. Oh, yes. You use that? Oh, I love it. It's oh, you when I it. first started, I used to have it open as I edited. Yeah. 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 Have you got it? Can you bring it up? Uh, on, your, on my on Kindle. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Right you got the cover? Character expressions cover. Yeah. Because it's Angela and Ackerman, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and Becca Puglisi, yeah. yeah. And yeah, they've got great, about great. they've got um about ten or twelve books now. They got a few editions. Thesauruses. Yep. No, because they do negative and positive character traits, and mm -hmm. um, oh, I forget what else. But there's heaps of them with similar covers but different colours. Yeah, they're great resource. <laughs> <laughs> great, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess. Other than resources like that, it's observing, you know, absor observing people. You know, I um, I have my I have a little notebook. Where is it? Here it is. My little one. I carry it around a lot with me, and I get a lot from my children. They they oh. feed my um, my creative well so much with just with some of the the expressions and phrases that they come out with. And then I'll go back to my door if I don't have my my notepad on me or whatever. And I'll go, what did you say before? <laughs> you know, and I'll write it down. It's just, yeah. they, they are just like this limitless source of inspiration, yeah. you know. And it can be difficult to capture, like sometimes I'll, I'll sit back and I'll watch, um, you know, the dy dynamics playing between my family members because our family are very, um, um, it's kind of like a fast environment, you might say. I don't know if that's the right word. But the exchanges between a lot of us, and we're all the same, are, are very kind of quick and witty and um, there's a lot of sort of... <clears throat> sarcasm I guess <laughs> you know That's and my children, know, my children know me and you know my husband Dave he's he's very similar so it's kind of you know going down to the children and particularly you notice as they're getting older you know and and I don't mean that they're disrespect for anything it's just they're very they're very fast with with their responses and how they yeah. they think about things and um but it's, we laugh a lot and it's very hard to capture that at times. Like I think, oh, why can't I, why can't I capture this in my book? You know, just that moment. But yeah, it's, it's all about yeah. observing and then, and yeah, bringing that into story. What do you yeah. think? Hmm. Yeah. And I think too, if you, um, if you doubt that you know, story or you doubt that you're working out story go to the movie with somebody who doesn't understand story and often you'll be sitting in the movie and you know what's going to come up next or you know that they've foreshadowed something and you're waiting for it and you can see like half the cinema will be shocked at whatever happens next and you'll be going yes i knew that was coming you know and it really shows you how much you actually learn about story just from yeah, working on story yourself. Well, you know, I think it's a, 
the process of learning and improving your craft it never stops and no. you know i um i find every time i sit down to write something i'm i'm you know um analyzing how i'm writing it and i'm finding new ways and and things so um yeah it's a never-ending process isn't it yeah it's what mm. keeps it exciting isn't it? it is it's exciting i love that i'm right into it at the moment i'm I'm on fire with my words. I just <laughs> Are you still burning them up? I am. I am. And wow. yesterday, you know, like I have um, my eight-year-old at home at the moment because she's been sick. <clears throat> yesterday, she was like throwing up all day. <laughs> and I'm not laughing because she was throwing up. It was horrible for her. Um, but I managed to just like from the afternoon and I started in the afternoon and I just, I got out like close to 2,000 words. I had to finish this oh. chapter. And um, I even got it off to my editor, like that that particular episode. And, you know, I read it back and I was like, I was really, really happy with it. So, good. Like, oh, I don't know how I did it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it when you have days like that, where it's just like mm -hmm. flowing. Just happens. Just happens. Yeah. Magic. Pain. Mm. Yeah. Alrighty. And talking about one last thing, the um, old shows. Um, did you ever watch the Beverly Hillbillies? Oh yes. God, I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> Texas <And> Gold. <laughs> did you watch Petticoat Junction? Yes, I remember. Near it, wasn't it? One was, it was before the other or something. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that was weird. Yeah, Wacky, fun. and I was going to say, like, with the Beverly Hillbillies, I have a friend and she had, um, um, she had, she remarried and she had a little boy with her husband and she named him, and they named him Jed. And oh, then cool. a little girl followed and they named her Ellie Mae. So <laughs> I was like, what is this, the Beverly Hillbillies? Was I don't think they did that purposely. No, they just like the names, you know. Oh. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. It's cute. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> yeah. 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 All righty. I, I think, um, how'd your card go? Yeah. I think story feeds your spirit a bit too, doesn't it? If Definitely. you're passionate about it. Mm. Definitely. And, you know, and not just for writers because story just makes the world go around, right? I mean, it's such yeah. a, um, a way to connect people and, um, and for us to all understand the world, whether you're a storyteller or a story um, consumer. Yeah. Through TV, <laughs> movies, books, you know, it's yeah. just, it, it doesn't Even stop. Even word of mouth, isn't it? Word of mouth, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, it's kind of, it's, TV has kind of become the modern oral storytelling, really, hasn't it? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And Except for some of the shows. <laughs> some of the shows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some of that reality TV, honestly. <laughs> reality mm. TV. Yeah. Well, you know, they have actually mastered the ability to make cooking and serving food a, a suspenseful act <laughs> you know, the music goes and the sweat's dripping and <laughs> it's like are they gonna make the food to the table <laughs> you can learn something there <laughs> and yet you do it every night with your kids <laughs> yeah, i know but my food never looks that good and i'm it's no. never that suspenseful but <laughs> But you persevere. I persevere. Yeah. <laughs> I persevere through the cooking because... Um, Same with telling stories, yeah. isn't it? And perfecting your craft, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, if you've got the fire there, you've got to do it. You've got to persevere because my mother... Oh! She always tells me... Really and I... <laughs> And I hate it when she says this. I hate it. It really gets to me. Um, she says to me, if, I, if I'm talking about my work and whatnot, she'll say, well, Kim, you've chosen the most, one of the most hardest businesses to get into, blah, blah, blah. And I just look at her. I'm like, Mom, 
I didn't choose it. You know, I didn't choose it. You chose me. <laughs> No choice I have to write what do you want me to do but you chose it I'm like didn't choose it <laughs> my mom drives me mad <laughs> lucky, you I love you, mom. <laughs> hey? lucky you got her into this episode yeah found a way <laughs> <laughs> all righty uh till next time uh thanks for tuning in and um Kat, you've got something to say to wrap this up. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it for me. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. You're all right. You can do it. Don't forget to subscribe to Creative Writing Energy on your preferred podcast platform or YouTube so you'll be notified when our episodes become available. If you like what we're doing and you want to get involved, head over to our Patreon page where for as little as a dollar a month you can support us and gain access to bonus content. That's patreon.com slash creative writing energy. And you can find us at whisperingincpress.com creative writing energy. And we look forward to chatting to you. And if you'd like to come to join our mastermind group, we're going to start one in February. So you can see that over at whisperingincpress.com slash creative writing energy mastermind. We're pretty yeah. excited about that, aren't we? Yeah, and we're uh, going to, we're going to, talk about that and do an episode about that I think soon so you know folks kind of know yeah. what we're doing and and that kind of thing and we are excited about that so. yeah we're and still we would like it. to talk to you so don't be shy talk to us we're not that scary we're not that scary although we might be scary we're, we're scary Australians oh that's true yeah I was, I was <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> All right. All righty. Till next later. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.